right. Can everyone hear me well? Yes? yes. Awesome. Before we actually start, and I give you my secret about how we acquired thousands of customers worldwide without spending too much on user acquisition, I just want to ask you a quick question here. Who's in the room is a founder of a startup? Okay, who's working in sales? All right, and marketing maybe? Okay, awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, so very quickly about Lemlist. Uh, we're the most personalized email outreach platform, helping sales team get more replies and more meeting booked through email outreach. Um, a bit of numbers, we have more than 8,000 customers worldwide, mainly based in the US, about 80% of them. We're based in Paris, and we're just five in the team, three co-founders and two employees. So far, our growth has been 30% month over month, and in our first year, we made, as uh, Max said, $250,000. So, essentially, the presentation is going to be around like four different points. The first one is going to be about how to build a community and why building a community is super important when you have a product and a SaaS. Then we'll see whether or not like, it's worth it to launch on AppSumo. Most of you guys have heard probably about AppSumo, and Oman is going to come this afternoon to make a talk about it. Since we launched on it, I also wanted to give like, feedback and how we, how we felt about it. Finally, we'll see how to use uh, LinkedIn to get uh, hundreds of thousands of views without spending money on ads. And we'll see about how to put outbound sales on autopilot and acquire customers uh, that way. So, why is it important to build a community? I know it sounds maybe like stupid when we talk about community, because it's like, yeah, it would be awesome to have a community, but in the end, it's really, for us, it was really key to success. First of all, we were able to get like, real insights from users. I'll show example in a, in a minute. Uh, it was a great way to increase also like, the brand loyalty. And on top of that, it's really a great way for you guys to build a brand and build your own fair advantage. Because you know, like, when you build a SaaS company, obviously you have features that can make, dif like, can make your product different. But when you build a brand and when you build like, something around your product, it's much more valuable than just features. And that's also a great way to differentiate. On top of that, we all have like SaaS companies here probably, so we all have like tons of support tickets, and having a community is also a great way to reduce tickets just because you know your users can answer questions. So our community is called the Email Outreach Family, so we wanted like to have a, a nice name so people can feel, you know, as a family, they can tell pretty much everything they want, share their feelings, share, share their struggles, and help each other out. From the very beginning, I used a lot of videos uh, just because I think it's a great way to connect with users and uh, really build strong relationship. And for us, that was great. So as I said, you know, like, it's super important to listen to the market and listen to your community. And for us, for example, we, with one guy, posted something. We, we started seeing the struggles. So if you've been sending emails, you know that deliverability, meaning like, are your emails actually ended up in the inbox or in the spam folder, is huge. And we saw that it was like a common struggle for users. And then we had one guy suggesting to create something that was essentially like helping each other warm up the email domain. And we actually decided, based on this comment on our community and based on the struggle, to build a unique feature that no one had built in the past, none of our competitors, none of the... And this was like actually a huge success. And this was coming actually from one guy who, you know, like showed the struggle in the community and started asking a question and asking for feedback. And based on that, we built like amazing like, feature, and it was really, like, uh, really helpful for our users, making them more successful. And on top of that, you know, they see that you're listening to them. So for them, it's like, really nice, and, uh, and they're more loyal. However, a community is also like uh, you have some drawbacks when it's public. So we've all been there, like, uh, decided to change like, the interface. For us, it's like, we're checking our metric uh, between like activation, retention, etc. And we saw that the activation rate was not high enough. So we brainstormed with the team and we we're like, okay, how are we going to change the product? So we decided to entirely change the product without warning our users. And as you can see, I'm just going to read what uh, Jonathan is saying. So his support is saying that the interface changes that were made were due to customer feedback. If any one of you people suggested this, you're an idiot. This is the worst UX exchange I've seen in a long time. I loved Lemlist yesterday, now I can't, anything, I can't find anything and I can't update things. So if you build a SaaS company, like myself here, 
like that hurts a lot because Lemnist is my baby. So when someone says, you know, like this type of things, you know, I wanted to cry. I felt super bad about it. And it's public on top of that. So you have the entire community watching, commenting, etc. So what we did is decided to spend time with those users. And actually, that's what also I like about communities is that you can always turn it around. So we spent some time with this guy trying to understand what was the issue, etc and fixed everything you know, on the platform, things that were missing for him, and tried to really understand the needs. And after that, you know, he posted again, saying that we were really helpful, that we made the changes they expected, etc. So even from a bad situation with communities, you can always turn it to your advantage and leverage it to really build stronger relationship with your users. Now we're going to talk about Product Hunt. Who here is aware of Product Hunt? Can you raise your hands? OK, not that much. All right. <laughs> so if you don't know Product Hunt, it's like the biggest tech-savvy community. And if you have a SaaS, you should definitely check it out. Or if you're working for a SaaS, you should definitely check it out. Um, this, this tool actually is called um, SimilarWeb. And uh, it's really helpful for you to know on any website. You can know the traffic. And you can also know the sources and from which country people are visited. So here you see that it's mainly coming from US and India, the crowd, and also Europe. So it's, uh, it was really relevant for us to, to be on that platform because we can launch your product and within one day you get tons of exposure, exposure in front of millions of people and they can judge your product whether or not it's good or bad. So what I would advise, I know some people are kind of over-engineering their launch, but I, oh, we launched actually Lemlist on Product Hunt when we were only like uh, two or three weeks old. So it was very new, very competitive market, but we wanted to check whether or not our ID was, uh, you know, like people were liking it or were liking the value proposition. And I think it's a great way to do that just because you can launch actually multiple times on Product Hunt. You can launch in the early days, even if you don't have a product, actually. I saw people doing that now. They launch on based on a landing page just to test whether or not, you know, like the value proposition is good. And then, you know, you, get, you start getting traffic, you start getting like uh, potential beta testers, etc. Um, so. On top of that, something that's great, uh, Facebook is really a goldmine for communities. Uh, who here is in uh, Facebook groups about pretty much anything they like? Like, are you guys in communities on Facebook? Can you raise your hands? OK, for those who are not, it's definitely a place where you can find tons of customers, tons of insights. And when you're launching on Product Hunt, typically, it's great to have like a list of communities where you can share that you're launching. And people are usually very supportive because you know, they kind of know how important it is for you. So for example, here we had a, a list of about 20 communities where we posted for our launch. And we ended up like number one product of the day. That generated basically more than 400 signups and about like 40 paying customers. And that's just like one day of preparation. So like the ROI is, is pretty huge like uh, when you're launching and especially when you're uh, early stage. And on top of that, we got spotted by AppSumo. So that's going to be my next point, AppSumo. <laughs> Should you launch on AppSumo? Who here is aware of AppSumo? Can you raise your hands? Ah, OK. Wow, more people know about AppSumo than Product Hunt. That's <laughs> so it's, uh, as for people who don't know, it's a community of entrepreneurs, agency owners, SMBs. And instead of selling your product on a monthly basis, you sell it on a lifetime deal. Yeah, lifetime. It's, it sounds scary. Initially, Like I was like, OK, why would anyone who's building a SaaS sell lifetime? But actually, because of the community is so huge and because they created such you know, a scarcity effect, most of the people that are buying are not always going to be using it lifetime. You know, it's a bit like uh, essentially like uh, the yearly users. After a year, you lost some, you get some more, etc. So um, overall, like in two weeks, we got like more than 3,000 users uh, on AppSumo. We made more than $160,000. And the thing is, because I think it's important to talk about money also sometimes, <laughs> AppSumo is taking 70% of it. So it's huge, but at the same time, you get huge exposure and you get like tons of feedback. And uh, so let's have a look basically at the pros and cons. Um, for us, it was really good because, you know, it's like you're in front of a huge community and you can leverage them after that to build your own community because they know you're like early stage. We launched an AppSumo just after our beta, actually. So at that time, we were not even selling our products. We decided to do it as like early bird uh, pricing. And from that, you know, we generated like tons of revenue. We got like great word of mouth. 
And it was also perfect for us because we were targeting at that time like more SMBs, startup agencies, etc. So based on that, it's really great, but you shouldn't do really like uh, AppSumo, I think. So first of all, if you're targeting enterprise, that don't make sense because your product will probably not be appealing for them. On top of that, like, uh, you shouldn't expect to launch an AppSumo and then become successful straight away. It's, like, it's a great way to get exposure and you can build on it, but the, the most of the work comes afterwards. Uh, it's huge for word of mouth, but you, on the other hand, you have to think that it's going to be like lifetime support and the users that you are selling, on a, you who bought your product sorry, on AppSumo, are never going to upsell. Like that's something I've talked to many like uh, AppSumo deal owners. Obviously, like yeah, you have like a very small percentage, but don't count on upselling them because it won't work. Um, so now we're gonna talk about LinkedIn. Uh, who's here on LinkedIn? Can you raise your hand? Ah, that's nice. <laughs> so before, like, okay, the the title was uh, how to get like thousands of hundreds of thousands of you on LinkedIn. It's nice, but actually like views and likes and comments are actually like bullshit. It's just like vanity metrics. <laughs> but the number of deal close really matter. However, I'm sure that you guys, if you do that correctly, you can correlate uh, the, the number of views and also the number of uh, business you sign, and we're going to see how. So first of all, you have to build an audience. So how did I manage to build an audience? So essentially, for everyone who signed up on Lemlist, because I know that they are relevant to me because they are like my potential like customers, I wanted to add them directly on LinkedIn. So the way I did it, it's pretty simple. I illustrated here. So it's uh, essentially the first name, the first name, last name, and LinkedIn. So you do an advanced search kind of in, uh, in, uh, in Google. Once you have that, you have the LinkedIn profile. And once you have the LinkedIn profile, obviously, you can send a personalized invite. However, I'm super lazy, so I want to do this automatically. To do that, you have two options. One, you have talented developers that can basically help you do it, or you can use a tool called Phantom Buster, and you link essentially like two APIs that allows you to, one, find LinkedIn profile based on first name, last name, company name, and two, add them automatically with a personalized message. So every time someone you know, like, uh, was signing up to Lemlist is automatically added to my LinkedIn profile, and on top of that, in the message I ask, as you can see, that's the message. So it's like, bonjour, first name. I'd like to personally welcome you to the Lemlist family. And then I ask the question, how did you hear about Lemlist? I know like, if you have a SaaS business, attribution is super difficult. Like, you never really know where your users are coming from. And by asking questions, it's actually like, the best way to understand where they're coming from and start building the relationship and also create you know, like, a, a stronger brand. Once you have like, your audience, you can start writing valuable contents. So most of the person in my connection are actually like Lemlist users, so people who are interested in cold email and getting more emails, more business stories through emails. So I decided to run a series of videos about like, cold email tips. So creating videos, helping people out, providing value without trying to sell anything. I see tons of people on LinkedIn trying to say, like, hey, look at my product, it's the best, wah, wah, wah. and that's bullshit. You need to provide value. You need to be out there, help your users become successful, and that way you can build like stronger relationship. So that was one thing. Another thing is, again, make your intro intriguing. So the goal when you're writing posts is always to start by something a bit intriguing. So if you know me, here it was like, you know that I love cold email, especially when, and then dot, dot, dot. So it forces people to click on it and then see what's your post about. Always trying to provide value. This post, for example, it's a cold email I received. And basically, like, it got 40,000 views. So I explained why it was a good cold email. I just circled like eight points and explained why it was well-structured, why it works, so people can leverage it. 40,000 views for that. Um, on top of that, you, you need to tell real stories. I know that uh, my competitors are in the room here, so you, if you're from Ukraine, you know reply.io. <laughs> At some point, those guys, uh, they were buying our name on AdWords. So here I'm, <laughs> I'm just putting it back. So it's like when one of your competitors buys your name on AdWords, you know you're doing a great job. So if you type Lemlist, you see like reply as the first result. That's interesting. And we had actually like tons of people commenting, explaining like, uh, and you know people get engaged. They get to your story and it's important. Be real, be true, and on LinkedIn it works really well. And finally, once you've provided value, shared your story, so without trying to sell anything, you can write viral posts. So, Viral posts essentially are giveaway posts where you ask people to comment something so they get something back in return. 
Here, for example, we wrote like a, a guide about uh, how to find anyone's email address. Um, and we asked people, like, if you want to know how to do that and get the guide, just comment guide below, and we will send you basically the guide. We had like more than 1,000 comments, and it generated about like 180,000 views, which is huge. So all those numbers are great, but you're probably wondering, OK, like, how to get the initial traction, how to get this. And you can actually use a tool called Lampod. Lampod is a Chrome extension that will help you get the initial boost, essentially. So when you post, automatically you will get likes from other founders, digital marketers, etc. You have like tons of verticals. It's a huge marketplace. And you can just join a pod and, and get the initial boost. Because when you get the initial boost, everyone starts seeing your post. And then it becomes like you kind of game the algorithm. And after that, you get much more traction. And obviously, yes, it generates business. Uh, so for me, it's like uh, I, will, I can just directly jump to the next slide. But essentially, every time I post, I've got between 100 and 250 connection requests. Uh, it generates hundreds of views on my LinkedIn profile. And I've got tens of sign up on Lemlist every time I post something. So I try to post two to three times per week. The best day usually to post are the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Weekend is great also if you're like targeting entrepreneurs. And uh, overall, we generated more than 100 customers through LinkedIn just by doing that. So without spending any money, just trying, you know, like posting valuable content, building an audience, and getting, you know, like people. So it's kind of LinkedIn is great. So initially, I was saying that building an audience required for me, I did it, you know, using our software. So it was like, yeah, like we know people are signing up to Lemlist, so we know that they're going to like the content I post. But actually, something else you can do is go on Sales Navigator, find, you know, your ICP, LD customer profile. So you know that, for example, there are like uh, companies between one and uh, 50 people that are working in marketing, etc. And then all those people, nothing, you know, like um, forbid you to add them actually. And you can do that automatically. So building an audience can also be done that way. You could actually decide to find your audience on LinkedIn, start adding them automatically, and then, you know, like uh, get them, you know, as part of your connection, post valuable content, and then add them. And that's actually what we're going to see on the, on the next slide. So it's put your outbound sales on autopilot. So for all of you who are working in B2B, you know that LinkedIn is really like the best way to find your target audience. So the idea we had is what actually to, OK, we know that our target is on, uh, is on LinkedIn. So we know that I post also tons of content on LinkedIn. So I want them to be connected to me. But since you know like we're also like doing email outreach, I want to send them emails because like I know it's like sending emails to people today especially in B2B, is one of the best ways to get replies, get meeting booked, etc. The fact that I add them on LinkedIn is also a great way to warm my audience because I know that my posts are going to be seen by them. So they're going to perceive me as potential like thought leader. So once I've done that, I've scraped like their profile and email. I want to send them an outbound sequence, and I want to do that basically on autopilot. So how can you do that? You're going to need three tools. Uh, first tool is Phantom Buster. Second tool is drop contact, and third tool is uh, Lemlist, obviously, but uh, you could use like, uh, any other like, tool if you have your own preferences. So the first step is, as I said, to find the relevant audience. This is basically like normal uh, LinkedIn, but on Sales Navigator, you have like, much more filter. And I actually, like, if you're serious about sales and you want to be like, uh, one step ahead in terms of personalization, you definitely should use Sales Navigator just because of the number of filters they have. Like LinkedIn is smart. In the past, you know, they were allowing with uh, normal LinkedIn to get all the filters, etc. But now you have to upsell, and I think it's a great like selling point. Once you have that, you need to write like compelling campaigns. At Lemlist, we really believe that video is the next best thing and is the best thing to actually like uh, build warmer relationship. So this gray square is actually like uh, one of the unique feature we have is image personalization and video personalization. So what we were able to do is just based on the email address, get screenshot of their website, put the name of the person, etc. And I'll show you the results actually of this campaign. So essentially, it looks like this if you have a GIF. So for each person, everything is personalized, and they feel that you've created a, a, a video for them. Once they click on it, they go as on a dynamic personalized landing page that is optimized basically for uh, booking meetings. And essentially, like uh, the entire setup, is, um, is to go on Phantom Buster. So we worked with the team at, uh, at Phantom Buster 
to create like uh, an amazing workflow to automate this. So essentially, the way it works is you're going to put the in the in the first slide I showed like how should you find like your specific audience on LinkedIn. You're going to take the the LinkedIn search. You're going to put it directly into Phantom Buster. And then you know you're going to put all your API keys, so the API keys to find the email address using a tool called Drop Contact. I think they integrate also with Email Hunter. And then you're going to put your keys to your email outreach platform, and they only integrate with us. <laughs> but uh, you could do that like uh, via API. Like you can basically you can also change the code of their API. So it's like if you're a bit techy, you can spend time and, and do your own thing. And then essentially what they're going to do is like for the list of people based on the search you've made. They're going to extract the entire list of people. Then automatically, they will go on the profile, visit the profile, find the email, add that profile on LinkedIn. So those people are going to become you know, like your connection eventually. You can also decide of a message you want to put. Personally, I advise you to test it. I mean, testing is the best. But from my experience, not putting message is also great, because like, if you have a decent profile with a decent following, people accept you. Um, and sometimes, like. As marketeers and as founders, we're kind of, I think, used to automation, especially on LinkedIn. So when, we, when I see like, messages, either with my name or either with that, like, some people I, I've even found you know, like, uh, ways to remove automation. So for example, you could put like, your first name, and next to your first name, like uh, an emoji. And that way, you know that all the email you receive with your uh, name with emoji or name uh, with emoji on LinkedIn are automated can make filters like this and clean kind of your inbox that way. But essentially, yeah, we, you have that. So you visit the LinkedIn profile, you add them, scrape the information, and then you can put them automatically in an email sequence and book meetings on autopilot. What I also suggest actually on this workflow is uh, to put a delay. So lots of people, when they automate, they like to do things super quickly. What I do when I use this, uh, this, um, this campaign workflow is I put like three weeks delay. So the people I'm adding on LinkedIn will receive an email from me only three weeks later. The reason why is like I assume that they're going to take between one to, let's say, five days to accept my connection request on LinkedIn. And then on top of that, I want them to see my content for another two weeks. So when I email them, they're actually like much warmer. If you've been doing ABM, account-based marketing, lots of people are spending like tons of money on ads just to warm an account prior to actually like sending them message, etc. With this method, it's exactly the same, a part that you don't spend like hundreds of uh, or like thousands of dollars on ads just to warm up an account. You just show your content, and it's much more valuable. It's much more like a uh, warm up. So the results we had with this campaign, like I launched it like uh, not quite a long time ago, so, but it was huge. Um, click rate is huge when you put a video in an email. It varies between like 30% to 90%. I think people, to be honest, and me the first, when I see an email with uh, just like a play button, I want to click on it, uh, and it really works. And on top of that, we were able, like, and we're able actually to book like meetings on autopilot and really like uh, leverage, you know, all the automation to build like warmer relationship, content on LinkedIn to provide value, emails to book meeting, and again, like when you're writing emails, just uh, a quick tips like to to end up. Don't try to be salesy. Lots of people are pushing about like, their products, services, etc. Try to build relationship. So to give you an example, when I reach out to people, I never talk about Lemlist. I never talk about what we do. I just ask them, like, OK, would you like to exchange about like, growth tips? We grow our company like, that way. We're doing this and this. Would you be happy to have a chat and talk about like, user acquisition? Then during the chat I have with people, I see whether or not it's a good fit. I think like sales salespeople who are like pushy, etc., that doesn't work anymore. Or like you're gonna be able to close some people, but it's not like uh, it won't work in the long run. Thank you very much. Uh, you can add me on LinkedIn, or you can send me your questions uh, via email.